Hidden NY, this Instagram page, I'm sure you guys are familiar with. I'm, right? I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Hidden NY, it's like the, I'd say the number one streetwear sneaker sort of, um, what, Instagram, mood board, blog things, right? Maybe it's taken over that, that little Jupiter guy because I think he got his account banned a couple of times. But from... For if you if your aesthetic is kind of streetwear and trainers, I think the number one place that you're going to kind of follow is um Hayden and White. I've got it here on the screen. Um, so they have you know standard stuff, loads of Jordans, loads of rappers, cars, expensive watches. You know that kind of side of streetwear that I'm not really a fan of, right? Which is essentially all those guys that used to wear high end fashion who are now wearing streetwear. But you know it still serves some sort of purpose. You still see some great archival images of brands and stuff that you kind of like. He obviously slips in some stuff of his own in terms of the socks that he does and hats and caps and stuff and blah blah blah. Anyway, so this guy was recently featured on a podcast called Hidden Fits. No, Throwing Fits, sorry. Hidden Fits. That's probably a good um, merger podcast name. And he essentially spoke about um, how he formed a relationship with Drake. Uh, Drake was obviously a big proponent, a big follower, a big fan of Hidden NY. Um, he, I, I think they basically put him onto Chrome Hearts, it feels like, or maybe Bari. I'm not sure why, but he's always wearing Chrome Hearts at the moment. There's a picture going around of Virgil now at the moment wearing a Chrome Hearts, you know, headband, which is just preposterous to say the least. And it reminds me of uh, peak Joe Budden uh, Fitz era, right? It's just a completely horrible outfit. And he's essentially... Even though I like his music, he is essentially single-handedly killed, you know. Uh, he's essentially killed um, Chrome Hearts. Him alongside a rich kid probably have essentially destroyed it. Even Gunner, you don't really wear it the right, not right way, but they've essentially ripped it to pieces. They've taken any kind of legitimacy that came, came out of it and essentially killed it by over-buying things. Is that a thing? Can you over-purchase stuff? Well, regardless, right? He basically spoke about his relationship with Drake. And if anything, this conversation basically... Um, was a reminder as to why some people hate some aspects of the streetwear industry and why there's a definite split and a different divide in terms of the different camps that occupy this world that is streetwear. There's different areas of it. And I just don't want to be involved in anything that has to do with whatever this guy was talking about in streetwear, right? And I'm going to play it for you now. It was a clip that I saw on Twitter concerning the whole entire thing. Da, 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 da. Let me get on here. Come on, load up, load up, load up, load up. Okay, here's this is the guy from from Hidden NY talking about his relationship with Drake. I, he he hit me up and he was like, "Yo, send me something to buy." That's like <laughs> all he said. So I made like a word document. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna impress him." I, I made this word document and it had I put all the pictures and there was forty links maybe of all the you know you could do that thing on Ground where. You you uh you refine the search and yeah, do the most popular and, shit, yeah, and stuff like that. So yeah. I put in his sizes, did that, and I picked out basically some of the most expensive, just ridiculous things that that sit on there for a long time. You know, they sit on ground these these crazy items, and uh and I sent him through, and he just bought all of it. And I was he like, bought- oh my god, he's buying like everything I could ever want. It's it, I was getting like. And like a little bit of the, the taste of how it is to buy all this stuff. So I just you were you were ga- you were gassed off the vapors. I believe I was gassed. I was gassed. I was like, oh what was the God. total? What was the, What was the total damage from just that first haul? Fifty k, sixty k. Yeah, light work. The yeah, light work light for Drizzy. Work for yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake, yeah, like, Drake had like a f- Drake Drake and hidden. Uh, actually had like a four or five week run where the most expensive item sold on yeah, Grail, yeah, like yeah. in any week, flip a coin. Drake is definitely in the top 10, but it, but that top, he was top three. Like, like that's a back to back to back to back championship yeah, yeah, yeah. run, dude. It was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> what, yeah. um, he was going crazy with it. He, yeah, he was. He has a lot of stuff. I got to say, he sends me pictures of his wardrobe and stuff. He has a lot of stuff. Cringe. Right? Super, super cringe, right? Incredibly cringe. So awful that it's, it kind of beggars belief. But hey, let's go through it. So, um, the most kind of telling thing that kind of came out of this, right, was it's basically, um, you know how people take the piss out of these little kids that are high beasts that just buy anything that's expensive? This is this same sort of kind of um, buying behavior or this kind of uh, pers- 
this kind of approach to fashion also applies to the guys who are a bit older and have a bit more disposable income. They're doing exactly the same things. They're just buying whatever's expensive, whatever is quote unquote rare because it's expensive, and then whacking it on with no sense of style, no sense of appreciation. That's kind of the really worrying part about that story is the fact that he, like the guy himself who Drake asked to, oh, give, give me a list. Fair enough. Let's take Drake out of the equation, right? Let's say he's a bit of a dork and he doesn't know necessarily how to dress that well. He doesn't really have any personal style, which I think is really annoying because I think he looks really great when he wears tracksuits and sportswear type clothing but whenever he tries to get to his fashion bag he always look, comes across a bit too try hard but put him to one side right because I think when you're as rich as he is you're allowed to make some um, incorrect decisions in terms of how you put your outfits together because you just got too much access to stuff sometimes the having a lack of means of buying things actually makes you have a better sense of style because you only have a certain amount of stuff to kind of choose from right so put him to one side the issue is that that grailed guy when he gets to, when he gets requests when he's requested by somebody who has means to put together a list of items that could suit his wardrobe instead of thinking about drake as an artist and what his style is and what he kind of wears and kind of asking some questions and having kind of i don't know a stylist appointment right a personal shopper's appointment with him from back and forth he instead goes on to grailed and just sorts by clothing size and expensiveness right by price basically and picks out the most rarest things and gives that to him instead when it has nothing to do with his personal style just go oh, let's pick that let's pick that let's pick, let's pick this out what there's no there's no understanding of the history of the brand how that ties into his story as a musician the 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 kind of era that kind of clothing was birthed from the design influences the political climate it's just nothing that you would think that would actually be such an easy win this is and again i'm not saying these things to sound smart these are just easy wins that would just kind of add a bit more of legitimacy to what's going on he could have gone on grailed and picked out some undercover underground canadian brand that people don't really know about maybe the designer of this head label was uh uh, an ex-Toronto person, bloody blood, maybe this brand that could tie win in the European house considering his new thing we put out with Khalid called um, Greece. I don't know, so many weird connections that you could have put together when you put that list together that would have really made a bit, added a bit more um, substance to it. But instead he just picks out the most expensive stuff, gives it to him and then now we're left with a page essentially that's been used as what? A weird quasi mood board for Drake and people of his liking? It's like, God damn, no wonder it's so terrible. No wonder. No wonder it's so terrible. Um, and then it comes down to, and then, and then the lack of style thing is a big thing, right? I've written on here. The lack of style is a bigger thing because that's the main issue I have with most of these kids is that, you know, you, you're free to buy what you want. But if what you're buying is just based on the price tag and based on what you've seen ASAP Rocky wearing with no correlation to what you're actually into yourself, it really makes you question um your kind of frame your kind of the way your mind works right that you're so willing and able because i always thought that was weird personally people that dress up like people like there's, there's that kid going around at the moment who kind of has that tiktok where he basically dresses up like playboy Kai. and i've always thought that's super bizarre why you purposely want to look like somebody else is really odd but it also makes me think like don't you have any sense of uh, your own personal style that you're trying to kind of flex and get out there now again i know it's difficult to do it's very difficult to find your personal style. It's very difficult to kind of land on something that works for yourself. But it does take a bit of homework. It does take a bit of exploration, a bit of patience to kind of fumble the bag a few times to buy a few things that are incorrect, don't really fit what you wear, don't really fit your body type or whatever it may be. But it's a far better journey than just... I don't know, deciding to copy and paste whatever Lou Uzi Vert's wearing or whatever Rich the Kid's wearing because that is just devoid of any kind of real interrogation, real kind of self-reflection as to what you're actually into and who you want to support. Um, continuously, I said, um, the death of Chrome Hearts. Yeah, again, I'm not even that big of a Chrome Hearts fan. I've, I saw, I used to see it all the time when I, you know, these Japanese magazines that I have down here somewhere, right? Like this stuff, right? Like these magazines and the boons and all that stuff, right? They they always feature stuff like um Chrome Hearts and Goros and all that sort of jewelry. And I never was a big fan of it. I didn't really care for it too much, right? But I appreciate what the kind of references. I appreciate the authenticity of it, and I appreciate the fact that there were some people out there that really, really gave a shit about it and wore it in a very tasteful and kind of stylish way, right? It just kind of it just always seemed effortless. Then out of the blue, I don't know if it was purposely their own kind of drive in order to kind of make sure that they kind of evolve into the next stage, but it's suddenly gone turn into i don't know the modern era of von dutch i don't know how why it happened overnight so quickly and it seems like it's gone it's gone far beyond being cool anymore it's just become you know whatever it's sort of like you know when vlon happened the same sort of thing vlon had a, a little time period where it was pretty um aspirational in his own way right don't get me wrong it's all printed on gildens all that sort of shit i get it i get it i get it but there was a time when vlon had its moment 
and then quite quickly it just evaporated and just went somewhere else right and same thing's happening with chrome hearts but they have a much longer history in the game doing their own thing beating to the um, moving to the sound of their own drum right that suddenly now for them to kind of um play into what's going on at the moment now in general it feels a bit weird and again maybe it's because they have had a change in management or they just wanted to evolve the brand anyway and they weren't making that much money but the death of chrome hearts is real right if you're a real chrome hearts fan from back in the day even just from the beginning of the 2000s to see what it's kind of turning into now must make you like yeah what the hell is this man rappers covering all their jeans with the chrome hearts cross regardless of what if it looks good or not buying the most ridiculous items from there just to flex on people the headband is like all right cool man um and then the, 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 oh and then i also heard that this kind of reminded me a little bit also of that why i hate the that youtube channel where all that kid goes around and asks people how much their outfits are it's like if if ever there was something that represented the, um, the complete antithesis or the complete opposite of what the values of streetwear should be about is that right going around asking people how much they're spending on the outfit is like irrelevant right it shouldn't matter because streetwear has never been about how much a certain item is or how much you paid for it it's always about things that kind of spoke to you in a real personal way things that kind of resonate with you far beyond just what it was printed on right whether it was the owners of the brand whether it was the messaging behind it whether it was the vibe part of the reason why supreme was so successful was because of the whole vibe around it right it wasn't necessarily about the clothes the clothes was shit I think even Jim Jim, Jim Jebbia said at the beginning when he started Supreme, he just started because essentially like, you know, the skateboarders had really great sense of style, but the clothes that they were buying at the time was garbage. So he just went to up the levels a bit. That was it. And some of the earlier clothings or some of the other earlier pieces Supreme did, especially if you buy some of the earlier t-shirts, they were printed on basic blanks. They were printed on basic blank t-shirts, hoodies. They were basically um, co-opted um, jackets as well. I remember the, that st standard bought kind of windbreakers from shops that he basically tabbed the logo on and then over time they kind of evolved into a full quote-unquote cut and sew brand but most of the reason why it was a it was appealing was because of that right some of the best skateboard brands that start off especially some i don't know i think of some of the brands that start off doing bearings or wheels and stuff just hardware it's basically because of the vibe diamond supply might be a good example of that right that hoodie represents or that t-shirt that logo was more then what it was the more than it was worth more than some of its parts really right it was about everything that nick kind of built around it the world that kind of got you in you know infatuated with that brand especially during its infancy so for people to go around tr buying things based on their price value and then thinking they're gonna get any kind of value from it, it's gonna add to their sense of style it's gonna make them a better person it's just like then the next man is just awful and the brand playing into it releasing things in hyper limited uh, numbers pricing things far out of the range of your average everyday person it's just all disgusting it really is and <clears throat> i don't know i don't know what what the future is for this but i don't live one i don't want to live in a world where you're just buying things based on the money you have in your bank account you should be able to f especially nowadays man like experimenting with different styles and trying things out that really work with you or not is so much fun trying to figure out what is your style and it's a never-ending journey really right if you sort of keep on refining it again and again and again I thought, I thought maybe these kids haven't grown up with you know um perusing uh street blogs and i don't know street style blogs or looking at people that were you know arriving especially during the early days of like the um the Sartorius blog where he was picking pictures of people like Petty Uma and all those Milan fashion weeks and some of these guys you'd see effortlessly cool and sophisticated outfits and stuff that I probably wouldn't necessarily wear I wouldn't necessarily match my personal style but a lot of it had to do with these guys have had a long and storied history of essentially spending dedicating their whole entire life to discovering or finding out exactly what they like and what they don't like right and it's kind of all been illustrated through the stuff that they buy and they've kind of dedicated their life to it. even sometimes some of the people that are obsessed with was it was it the kotaku kind of culture in japan right um is it kotaku it's called kotaku isn't it, right when you're obsessive, obsessive about collecting certain things or when you're involved in the streetwear industry that they're involved in over there it's more so than about just looking like a certain person it's always about kind of picking up things that work with you um picking up brands that really resonate with you and sort of just sticking with them for the long haul and really kind of framing your personal style around that but kids these days man god almighty buying anything just because it's expensive is like whew, could it be me could it be me